What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV, back here for another episode of The Five Takeaways, where we're going to take a look at the 2-0 win over West Ham yesterday and see what five things we can take away from the game. And let's start off with number one. He can defend. He can attack. Emerson Royale, he's our wing back. Yeah, and it was a great display from Emerson, um, carrying on his really good form from uh, the Fulham game and Man City away and Man City at home. And he's starting to add goal contributions to his um, to his really positive displays in terms of st yeah, statistically um, how he performed. Two uh, key passes, two tackles, five clearances, two shots on goal. And obviously he did score the all-important opening goal as well. And it was so nice to see him actually making those kind of runs um, centrally um, uh, down the centre to really hurt West Ham and get in those positions to score goals because that's been a criticism I've had of him uh, in the final third. He doesn't get into enough goal-scoring positions and he did that on Sunday and then ended, uh, ended up uh, um, getting the, the opening goal and as well as build up play is really improving um, so it's all very very positive from Emerson Royale at the moment yeah definitely and I think that we've definitely seen a big turn in form from Emerson in recent weeks uh, starting off with that Fulham game defensively completely on point being aggressive sliding tackles flicks tricks and um, adding an extra man in midfield as well which has done us the world of good so um, I'm loving the upturn in Emerson's form and is Porro going to get a game <laughs> is he ever going to get a game not if Emerson keeps seeing those no look passes he won't get a game <laughs> for a long time uh, but yeah big up to Emerson Royale because he is silencing the critics one by one at the moment let's move on to number two and that is super sub Sonny yeah and again Son making a difference off the bench for the second time this season um, there was a lot of calls for Sonny to um, be benched for this game considering his poor form and the lack of opportunities for Richarlison um, Richarlison did start and um, didn't make too much of an impact during the 90 minutes but Son for the second time this season came on um, within five minutes he got on the score sheet he was only on the pitch for 20 minutes but got two key passes completed one dribble and obviously got um, got his goal and that is that follows on from his substitute appearance against Leicester where he came on and scored uh, got a hat trick and was absolutely phenomenal and he's now got four goals off the bench compared to only one from the start of this season which is incredible yeah it's crazy to think to be honest it really is and now it just brings up the question is um, do we carry on with that? I mean, I would like to see us carry on with it. It seems as though it's working. And, you know, the old saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, what do you do? do you th we've surely got to carry on with him on the bench. It's a difficult one. Yeah, I think so. I think, I think you've got to... Um I think you've got to persist and actually give Richarlison a fair crack at it as well, as much as Son came on and scored. But at the end of the day, Son is one of our main players and he's one of our best players. So it's... it's um, it's a difficult position for the coaching staff to, to, to leave him out again from the start, especially when you're playing a, you know, a team with a game you have to win like Chelsea. But I think I agree. I think get, have Richarlison tire out the defenders, then bring on Solly to bring the killer blow. But you've got to remember as well, we were winning in both those games that Son came on as well. And that, that's like the perfect situation for him. It's a different situation than, for example, for chasing a game and then he has to come on and there's, you know, it's clogged up defences and mm. deep, deep lying defences he has to face. Then all of a sudden it will be uh, more difficult. But um, I agree. I think at the moment it's working. So I think just persist. Yeah. Let's move on to number three, and that is Confident Romero. Yeah, and I, I thought he put in an unbelievable display against West Ham. Um, on Sunday I thought he was at his confident best um, he really did not give the West Ham attackers a sniff um, three tackles four interceptions six clearances he won four of his eight ground duels and two of his three aerial duels completed one of two dribbles as well and uh, and he got, really Antonio had to um, be hauled off with about 20 minutes to go because he just wasn't getting a kick and um, it was a return to form for El Romero who's kind of had some in different form this season but this was definitely his best display of the season for mid season for me and he looks so confident and back to his best yeah he did um, I just want to call on a bit of consistency from Romero I don't think he's shown enough consistency th over the course of the season um, even though he has been our best defender this season by some way um, I think that just goes to show the level of our the other defenders as opposed to what uh, levels Romero has been showing this season but yesterday was definitely back at his uh, ultimate best let's hope that he can uh, show this level uh, show a level of consistency now um, over the remaining games of the season because if he plays like that we're, we're so difficult to play against and the aggression the anticipation um, the way he dinks the balls into the midfield and to Harry Kane I think is unbelievable
unbelievable and he just adds that different element to our game when he's on the pitch um, especially when he's playing like that so we need to see that on a consistent basis from Romero that's for sure but yesterday was definitely a step in the right direction in terms of number four is home comforts yeah and it's um, the first time actually we've had our struggles at home this season um, especially of late last few months it's actually the first time um, that we've had back to back home wins since um, late September early October when we beat Leicester 6-2 then we beat Everton 2-0 so it's been a while since we've had those consecutive home victories hopefully now that can be a good basis to uh, build on for the remainder of the season and make White Hart Lane um, or the Tottenham Stadium a fortress which uh, has been at times but this season we've lost many get way too many games at home Villa Liverpool Newcastle Arsenal um way too many games and um now and what was also what i'm also happy about as well is the fact that we've won those two games back to back at home but it's also two very different types of games you know man city come at you they um press you high they leave space they they, they pressure you really intensely and then west ham sit deep they wait for you um they they try and frustrate you and we've um come through both those games with six points and um beaten both those challenges without conceding a goal so positive stuff yeah um I think we need to make this place a fortress and I thought we were at one stage but then uh, we had a couple of losses in a row Um, but look it seems to get back back on track now two big wins there Man City and West Ham and two big games there to come now Chelsea next week AC Milan um, in a couple of weeks so if we can get positive results in those two games I think that we can go on a really big run from now until the end of the season really can make this place a fortress but I think um I've been a bit let down by our by our form at home this season. And in fact, I think our form away from home was a bit better um, as opposed to like a week or two ago. I don't know what this win or, or two have done for it, but um, we need to be doing a lot better at home and we can't be losing to the likes of Aston Villa and, and those kind of teams at home. Uh, I think the, the results against like the big six and the top four teams are fair enough because they're very difficult games and they can, can be swung on a knife edge. But... The home, we need to be getting uh, consistent results at home now and with these next two games, if we can go on a run now of Man City, West Ham, Chelsea and AC Milan, I think you'll say definitely the form is coming back at home and and that's somewhat to making this place a fortress. So definitely positive over the last couple of games, but like I said before, consistency is the key. So we need to keep going. And last but not least, it is the fifth and final takeaway and that is into the top four and with that victory um, against West Ham we now leapfrog West um, uh, Newcastle United who lo- lost away at home to Liverpool on Saturday night to go into the top four be it they do have one game in hand and we are a point ahead so if they do win that game in hand um, they will go back above us and they do have an, a cup final next week so uh, after the Chelsea game we are going to have two games in hand so it depends on um, the results how they play out but we are into the top four after all the troubles uh, we've had this season in eight games we've lost our 24 so we've lost a third of our games and yet we are still in the top four right now which is um, quite incredible considering um, the troubles and our def- our, how leaky our defences have been and um, the Conte's future to be in the top four after 24 games is uh, very very surprising but hopefully it's only upwards from here considering that statistically we have um we have had the toughest games from this point and we have um the most comfortable not the most we have the lowest ranking teams left to play when it comes to the fixture list statistically so the fixture list could be playing in our favor if we can get a good result at home to chelsea next week then all of a sudden the fixture list really starts to open up for us and hopefully we can really um start going on a late run second half of the season well, having said all that and they're saying that Spurs have got a quite favourable fixture list what you said like third or fourth easiest in the, in the league or something like that um, do you think that we can potentially target the likes of Man United uh, well they're going to be over there in Europa League so it's, look, they they they've got a tough. All all the teams um, around us in the top six have tough fixture lists left. We have probably compar- I think comparatively, when you look at just statistically, we do have the easiest. So I'm not going to start looking at Man United just yet until we get a bit closer to them because I think it's seven points at the moment. Um, so I, they, look, if they go through against Barcelona then I think they could get distracted. But then again, you know, we, we might still have Champions League. So I, st- I, I, I think Man United are playing very well. I think they got very lucky to win as comfortably as they did against Leicester, but they did get the win. So 
I don't think I think we've just got to concentrate on top four for now and staving off Liverpool and then later on if we are getting if we are close or even above Man United then we'll then we'll see where we're at Mm. All right, so there you have it. That is our five takeaways for the 2 0 win against West Ham at the Tottenham Stadium yesterday. Let me know your thoughts on our five takeaways in the comment section below, but also let me know if we've missed anything and put your takeaways in the comment section below as well. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, come on, on you Spurs. Spurs.